Lymphoma and leukemia are both types of hematologic malignancies, also known as blood cancers. Cancer in general affects specific cells in the body. So lung cancer occurs in the cells in the lung and breast cancers affect the cells in the breast. So hematologic malignancies or blood cancers is related to the cells that are usually in the blood. So the white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. The white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets that are in the blood are all mature. The immature ones are produced inside the bone marrow, which is a soft spongy tissue located inside the center bones. There are two types of bone marrow. We have the bone marrow containing the hematopoietic stem cells, and this type of bone marrow gives rise to white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. The other type of marrow contains mostly fats. So some bones contain the stem cells and others contain mainly fat. Within the bone marrow, that have the hematopoietin stem cells, it looks like this. It starts with a multi-potential hematopoietic stem cell, which can differentiate into any type of blood cell. The cell lineage ends up splitting into two categories, myeloid and lymphoid lineage. The myeloid lineage gives rise to red blood cells, platelets, and certain white blood cells. And the lymphoid lineage gives rise to only white blood cells, the lymphocytes. Lymph Lymphoma refers to a cancer of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a circulatory system that's part of the immune system. This system consists of lymphatic vessels, lymph, lymphoid organs or tissues like the spleen, thymus, bone marrow, tonsils, and lymph nodes, which houses immune cells like lymphocytes. The lymphatic system helps store, support, and activate lymphocytes. These lymphocytes are then able to fight infections and also filter harmful substances from the lymph fluid through lymph nodes. When fluid from the blood leaks into the body tissue, it becomes interstitial fluid. This fluid enters the lymphatic vessels and becomes lymph, where it's filtered of waste, bacteria, viruses, etc. Cleaned lymph is then returned turn to the bloodstream. Lymphoma occurs when the mature lymphocytes in the lymphatic system become mutated and divide uncontrollably. Lymphoma can affect B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells. Patients typically present with swollen lymph nodes. These are usually painless and it can present in the neck, armpit, or groin. This is because, again, the cancerous lymphocytes accumulate in the lymph nodes, making them enlarged. Fever, because the immune system becomes overstimulated by the abnormal lymphocytes, leading to chemical release that trigger fevers. Night sweats, and this could be profuse sweating. Often patients will complain that their clothes get soaked or even their bed sheets. This is caused by the immune system's reaction and cytokine release from the lymphoma cells. Unexplained weight loss, so losing more than 10% of body weight over six months without trying. Because these symptoms are non-specific and can present in any other condition, the diagnosis requires a systemic approach. A medical history and a physical exam is done where the doctor would check for swollen lymph nodes in the neck, armpit, and groin. Again, lymphocytes hang out in the lymphatic system. So if there's an excess number of lymphocytes now because of the cancer, we would see the lymphoid tissues and organs become enlarged. So the MD may check to see if the spleen is also enlarged. Then a blood test is done and you may see normal red blood cell platelets and white blood cell. The lymphoma occurs within the lymphatic system. So usually in the lymph nodes, right? So not the blood. So if you do a blood test, look in to see if there's an increase in the lymphocytes in the blood, it may appear normal. But in advanced forms of lymphoma, the cancer actually spreads to the bone marrow where the blood cells are produced. The bone marrow becomes crowded with these cancer lymphocytes, leaving less space for healthy red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. So in those cases, if you do a blood test, you will see a decrease in the red blood cell, platelets, and white blood cell. Imaging tests can also be done. So like a CT scan, a PET scan, or MRI, which will show the size and spread of the lymph nodes or organs affected. PET scans are especially useful for detecting active lymphoma cells. A lymph node biopsy is one of the most crucial tests in this case, and an excisional biopsy is the gold standard. So a whole lymph node or a large section will be 
surgically removed, and then the pathologist will examine it under a microscope to confirm lymphoma. This is essential because only a biopsy can confirm diagnosis and determine the exact type of lymphoma. In general, treatment involves chemotherapy, which targets rapidly dividing cells and interfere with its cell cycle or directly damage the DNA. Targeted therapy is used, especially when the disease have specific mutations or genetic markers. Radiotherapy or radiation plays a role. And lastly, stem cell transplant. So many lymphomas respond well to treatment initially, but in some cases the disease comes back or it doesn't respond. So doctors need a way to use much higher doses of chemo to kill the resistant lymphoma cells. The problem is very high doses of chemo will also destroy the bone marrow where blood cells are made. So a stem cell transplant is essentially a rescue strategy, right? The patient will receive a very high dose of chemotherapy. This will wipe out the lymphoma cells. This also unfortunately wipes out the patient's bone marrow. Then stem cells will be infused back into the patient's bloodstream. These stem cells will migrate to the bone marrow and regrow a healthy blood system. Next, we have leukemia. As discussed previously, it's also a type of blood cancer, meaning it affects the blood cells. So it can affect red blood cells, platelets, or white blood cells. Well, in leukemia, it is affecting the white blood cells. Because leukemia begins in the bone marrow, we like to sometimes define it as the cancer of the bone marrow. So it affects white blood cells in the bone marrow. When in the blood, white blood cells are usually mature and ready to function. But within the bone marrow, where they are all made, these cells are mostly immature. After maturation, these cells move into the blood. So yes, leukemia affects white blood cells because it begins in the bone marrow. It affects the precursor or immature white blood cells like the hematopoietic cells and the progenitor cells. Now, all blood cells originate from the hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. These cells can self-renew or make more stem cells, differentiate or turn into all types of blood cells. The progenitor cells are partially developed cells committed to becoming specific types of blood cells, meaning they will end up becoming a mature cell from the myeloid lineage or one from the lymphoid lineage. It's more common for leukemia to affect the progenitor cells than the hematopoietic cells. Some examples of leukemia affecting the progenitor cells are acute myeloid leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. One of the most important differences between leukemia and lymphoma is that in leukemia, these malignant immature cells crowd the bone marrow and end up spilling into the bloodstream in large numbers. Similar to lymphoma, leukemia occurs due to a mutation in the immature white blood cells, leading to uncontrolled growth of these cells. These immature cells are also referred to as blast cells. Leukemia causes the bone marrow to produce a large number of abnormal white blood cells which don't function properly and crowd out the normal blood cells. This leads to decreased red blood cell leading to anemia which presents as fatigue, infections because of the decrease in the white blood cells, bleeding because of the decrease in the platelets, bone pain because the cancer is in the bone marrow with a lot of activity, right? So the bone marrow is kind of like an overdrive with all these cancer cells. These symptoms are still nonspecific and requires comprehensive diagnosis, starting with the blood test, which will show decreased red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. Again, because the leukemia is crowding the bone marrow where all these cells are made. A peripheral blood smear is a test where a drop of blood is spread thinly on a glass slide, stained and examined under a microscope to evaluate the number, size, shape, and maturity of the cell. Cells. It helps identify abnormal white cells like blast cells, which as discussed previously are the immature cells that are not normally seen in peripheral blood. A bone marrow biopsy is the key test that confirms leukemia. It shows overcrowding of the abnormal cells in the bone marrow. An immunophenotyping is also done to identify and characterize cells based on the types of markers they express on their surface or inside the cell. This helps determine the different subtypes of leukemia, and this is also done for lymphoma. Cytogenetics or molecular tests are also done to detect chromosomal translocations, deletions, duplications, and mutations. This helps confirm the subtypes 
type of leukemia or lymphoma, and also it's a guide treatment. For leukemia, treatment approach includes chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy. In essence, the immunotherapy is meant to make your immune system smarter and stronger so that it can fight the cancer on its own. I have a video on the mechanism of action of immunotherapy. Link is right above. And lastly, these patients may also receive stem cell transplants. And that will bring this video to an end. I hope I was able to clarify the differences between lymphoma and leukemia for you. And if you learn at least one thing, please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave all your questions down below. Thank you for watching this video and take care.